Well, hello people, this is uh, Saturday, I uh, yesterday I got off work at 6 o'clock, got a little bit of rest and came down to the clubhouse. Uh, to see who is all left at the uh, meetup. I suppose I visited with some of them for oh five or ten minutes before they all just started up and leaving. Yeah. The uh, last one left uh, this morning, around nine o'clock, I believe it was. Yep, they had a beat up all week long. Evidently had a pretty good time till I got there. And uh, they started leaving once I got there. Of course, you know, I, I'm the cleaning guy at the clubhouse, so I went in and started yelling and screaming and hooping and hollering and who put the papers on the floor and why does this floor look the way it does and one whole week and no one knows how to use a sweeper. Look at these stealthy dishes. What the heck? There's no trash bag in my brand new trash can. I'm going to have to clean my trash can. I mean, it wasn't very long and everybody is disgusted with me thoroughly, so they all started a leaving. But it didn't bother me in the least because that's my job is to make people disgusted at me and leave. Yeah, Keith's got to go to work later today. I still want to whole reason I was going to the clubhouse too, uh, when I bought my helmet, got them on sale, and I kind of liked it, so I bought two of them, identical, and uh, I just been wearing this one, and I don't know how, don't remember where or whatever, but on the top, it's got these big hunks of uh, strips for ventilation. I just happened to notice a couple days ago, one of them big strips is missing. It had came off the helmet, which probably a quarter of the side of the helmet, you know, disappeared. So I got holes in the top and stuff. So I thought, well, no big deal. I'll just go get my other new helmet and put the camera and everything on it and be ready to go. So I want to, yeah, get my helmet wherever it may be in there and get my camera on it. That's why it's smart to buy two when you buy them. You never know how long one will last. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to some sort of cheese house or something like that right now.
Well, I got one more uh, week of therapy. And I'll be all done with that Friday. Of course, uh, Tuesday after work, I got to go up for my uh, stress test for the doctor there. That's supposed to take about four hours. Pearl. That must be where we're going, the Pearl. Pearl Valley Cheese. You guys ever been to Pearl Valley Cheese? Well, if not, this is your lucky day. But that's where we're going. Pearl Valley Cheese. And I'll give you three guesses what they make at Pearl Valley Cheese. Nope. 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 There you go. Three guesses and you guys don't know what they're making at Pearl Valley Cheese. Well, I'll tell you. I sure have a pretty stupid viewing audience. Thanks a lot. Well, I suppose I could talk about uh, some of the people that came up to the meetup. First, we had one from uh, West Virginia, Mr. Dante Fox. No, no, well, now hold your applause till I'm done talking. Don't you know, don't want to interrupt me. But uh, yeah, Mr. Dante Fox, he uh, came up. He had a little bit of problem, I guess, when he uh, crossed the Ohio, West Virginia Ohio line. Uh, state trooper seen something in the back of his. Uh, back of his cans there you know and kind of flickering and looked familiar to him so he pulled him over uh, he took his fox suit yeah he's gonna bring his fox suit up to show us all highway patrol seen the tip of the tail was flopping in the wind and noticed right away that was a fox fur took it away from him like he was fined sixty thousand dollars for killing a fox that uh, was on the endangered species list. That didn't have any. Didn't make Dante feel bad or nothing. He said he'd go back home to West Virginia and shoot him another fox later. But he apologized. He couldn't show it to us. And didn't seem too broken up about. Ohio Petrol taking his fox fur. They uh, yeah, had pretty good time anyway. And uh, we had one from Pennsylvania that was uh, Muzzle Mike. He came in. The way I understand it, he got hit coming across the border too from Pennsylvania and high. And the uh, trooper said they could smell gunpowder and pulled him over and took all of his arsenals away from him, wouldn't let him bring him into the state of Ohio. They was only like six feet away from the state of Pennsylvania. Mike, I guess, tried to plead with him, you know, here, let me just t step back in here in Pennsylvania and then I'll take my artillery home and, and then I'll come back through. And they said, no, we're going to impound it. You're done with it. We're going to keep all your, all your high explosives and stuff like that that you're trying to sneak across the border. And 
uh, you know, might get arguing with him, but it's only six feet, you know, he'll go over there and stand in Pennsylvania where he's permitted to have all these uh, nuclear submarines and tanks and de missile destroyers and all this stuff. And they can hand them back to him and he'd take them home and highway, uh, Ohio Highway Patrol would have nothing to do with that. They said, no, we have uh, done confiscated this stuff in the in the great state of Ohio, and we're going to get rid of it, and you can't have it back. So Mike, he come on up to the meetup. Uh, he was he was pretty distressed, and you know everything about it. He lost lost all of his armament and stuff. They even took his armament that he was wearing for a motorcycle. They said, "Armor's armor, and you're not having none of this stuff in Ohio." And, and, but that's the way it is. Okay, I'm going to stop right there if the people that came in and we're going to look here. We're at the uh, Big Cheese Factory. Yeah, we're at the Big Cheese Factory. Yeah. Now, back at the, uh, who the heck you waving at? 